Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Gita Mary and today we're gonna look at the impact of soy. This is one of those videos that's been requested quite a lot in the comments on my other impact videos and I hear you. I also think it could be super interesting to look into the impact of soy specifically now we're talking a whole lot more about it in terms of the rise of vegans and vegetarians. So I think this is a really important conversation to have. Okay. Let's get into it. The soybean is a type of legume that's native to East Asia and since the 11th century it's been a very essential part of most Asian cuisines. It's only within the last 100 years that the soybean has been widely introduced in Western cuisines. And during these last few decades the soybean has become one of the world's most profitable and essential crops. There are some of the more well-known types of soy meant for human consumption like tofu or edamame but the list is a little bit longer. Look at this. Okay. Just within the last 50 years, soy production has actually increased 15 times over, which makes it one of the largest expanding crops in the world. Today, soy is cultivated on a global scale, with the US and South America dominating the production. The US, Argentina and Brazil actually account for about 80% of all global production of soy. In 2017, 123.6 million hectares of land were used to grow 352.6 million tons of soybeans. So let's take a closer look at the impact. The soybean only produces one yield in each lifetime and is also non-responsive to fertilizers. This means that farmers have to keep increasing the amount of land that's used to meet demand for soy production. And that means that many of the tropical places where soy is typically grown, we end up clearing huge amounts of land that were rainforest, growth forest, indigenous land. <sighs> Actually, soy production takes up an area the size of France, Germany, Belgium and the Netherlands combined. When huge chunks of natural wild nature is cleared to grow just one crop, that's called a monoculture and very few species thrive in that environment. Monocultures cause vital ecosystems to fall apart, which trigger massive loss of biodiversity. And the Cerrado Basin in Brazil is a really good example of this. The Cerrado shelters 5% of the Earth's living species and 30% of Brazil's biodiversity. However, extreme cultivation of the area, limited environmental conservation, few to no penalties for ignoring environmental restrictions and cheap profitable farming is causing the Sahado native vegetation to be steadily destroyed. Satellite imagery taken between 2006 and 2017 has revealed that 170,000 hectares of Sahado forest were cleared to grow soybeans. Moreover, this is completely legal. Brazil Forest Code states that only 20% of privately owned Sahado land needs to be set aside for conservation in comparison to the 80% of the Amazon. Furthermore, studies show that that at this current pace the Sahara will be completely destroyed by 2050 if policies aren't changed. Also, I am not finished. <laughs> because converting natural land into agriculture is also one of the leading causes of rising CO2 emissions. This is basically primary school level stuff, but let's go over it anyway. Trees absorb and store massive quantities of CO2. The Amazon rainforest alone holds some 76 billion tons of CO2, which is equivalent to 21 years of Europe's combined annual emissions. When forests are cleared to grow crops, like soy, all that CO2 is released into the atmosphere. And furthermore, the trees will no longer be there to absorb CO2 in the future, which is bad. Agriculture, soy included, is the leading cause of soil erosion. The intense practices of agriculture like irrigation and plowing move the nutrition-packed layers of topsoil from huge areas of land. And also there are no trees to protect the soil from wind either, because we cut those down, remember? Each year, Brazil loses about 55 million tons of topsoil due to soy production. And does that have consequences? Yeah, yes it does, yes it does very much. When fertile topsoil is lost, agriculture becomes less effective, which has huge consequences on crop yield and food security. And that we will have to convert ever so more natural areas into agriculture because the agriculture that we have now is not as effective because we converted land into agriculture. Do you see how this is a bad spiral, y'all? It's almost like we're entirely dependent on microorganisms to survive, huh? So what do we do with all this goddamn soy? I constantly see articles stating that soy is bad or articles that has interviewed a farmer saying that everyone should stop eating tofu now because soy has this huge impact on the planet. So instead we should just eat local beef. You know, 
to save the environment. I also see these wild studies made with absolutely wild methodology stating that eating beef is better than eating no beef. Generally don't get me started on the methodology of many of these pro-meat studies because they are definitely leaving a lot to be desired in terms of any actual scientific findings. You know at this point I guess they're just creating content for the counter argument to a plant-based diet but I guess like they also have to because anything but would be bad for business. Am I right? Mm, just a pet peeve of mine don't worry. However, this huge impact of soy is actually not a direct result of people wanting to eat more tofu or people cutting down on meat in general. No, the main problem is actually animal agriculture. And yes, I know at this point it's very the butler did it. Now this number tends to vary a little bit and I guess that depends on when the study was conducted and where it was conducted. But it's generally estimated that between 80 to 90 percent of all soy produced in the world is produced to feed animals. Only a tiny 6% of all soy produced in the world is meant for human consumption. And then there's a solid chunk used for biofuel. An overwhelming majority of livestock today is fed soy because it's cheap and it's rather high on protein. Actually, we use soy to feed livestock to the extent that the average European indirectly consumes over 60 kilos of soy over a year from eating animal products. Spending resources, water and land to feed and grow animals that we then eat is a really bad investment. Because when we put 100 calories into an animal, we won't get them all back. Actually, for every 100 calories we put into growing an animal, we only get an average of 12 calories back. Bad investment, you know? And as our population grows and the middle class expands, the demand for animal products is increasing. By 2025, the global production of beef and pork is expected to increase by 22% compared to 10 years ago. Poultry will increase with 26%, dairy with 18%, and eggs with 27% by 2030. And as the demand for these animal products increase, the amount of land it requires to feed these animals will also increase. And animal ag and cultivating crops for livestock to eat is already taking up a disproportionately large part of cultivated land, with almost 80% of all agricultural land being used for these purposes. So can soy solve the problems with soy? I am really proud of this headline, by the way, just let it be known. Can we combat some of the issues we see with the increasing amount of soy being produced by producing it not for livestock, but producing it for humans? The numbers are definitely in that favor. Producing the same amount of protein for chicken as soy requires three times the land, pork requires nine times, and beef requires 32 times the land. And this is a quite important detail that I often see overlooked when we're talking about the impact of soy. A lot of arguments against soy is that if we stop producing soy in rainforest areas for animals and instead just eat that same soy as humans, we're back to square one. And although I think it's very important to get as far away from turning natural indigenous land into agriculture as we possibly can, like, it's still a whole lot better because we're going to use a lot less land to do so. Continuing on this, if we swapped out animal-based proteins for soy-based proteins, it could decrease deforestation with 94%. To put it differently, if we stopped depending on animal products and transitioned to plant-based options instead, we would save land, resources and be able to grow more food in less space, thus be able to feed more people. Pretty neat. From an emissions perspective, eating soy rather than eating an animal that was fed soy is also a really good idea. Consuming tofu or other types of soy products one to two times a week for a year emits about 12 kilos of CO2, while eating beef one to two times a week for a year emits over 600 kilos of CO2. I also found this food calculator on BBC and I thought it could illustrate the point pretty well. So let's take a look. If you have tofu three to five times a week for a year, that will add 33 kilos of annual greenhouse gas emissions. That's the equivalent of driving a regular petrol car 85 miles, or the same as heating an average UK home for five days. Your consumption of tofu also uses 1,565 liters of water, equivalent to 24 showers lasting eight minutes. Now let's take a look at one of the meats that's typically described as a low impact meat chicken. If you have chicken three to five times a week for a year, that will add 284 kilos of annual greenhouse gas emissions. That's the equivalent of driving a regular petrol car 726 miles, or the same as heating an average UK home for 45 days. Your consumption of chicken also uses over 90,000 liters of water, equivalent to 292 showers lasting eight minutes. Lastly, there's one of the most polluting types of meat, 
which is beef. Having a 75 gram serving of beef three to five times a week for a year will result in 1,611 kilos of your annual gas emissions. That's the equivalent of driving a regular petrol car 4,112 miles, or the same as heating an average UK home for 250 days. This consumption of beef also uses 4,625 square meters of land, equivalent to the space of 17 tennis courts. Now, I really want to end this video on a list about what we as consumers can do to make sure that our own soy consumption is as sustainable as it can be. Go for organic soy products. Some soy products are processed with hexane, which is a neurotoxin and also a petrochemical solvent. So yeah, organic. Check with manufacturers where they source their soy from. Is it from rainforest regions or are they using soy crop rotation systems? These things are kind of important and it gets a little bit nitty gritty, but definitely check in with the brands on where they source their soy from. It's also fair to ask manufacturers if they use the bean or nothing but the bean because different elements of the soy plant is used for different things and some companies just take the part that they want and let all the other parts of the soybean go to waste which we do not want. There's both the bean, there's oil, there's the husk. Reduce or completely cut out animal products from your diet. I have so many videos about this as well, so you can find links down below to videos both about my own transition from a meat lover to a vegan, and you can also find different recipes that will make that easier for you. Soy is also not the answer to everything, and there are other types of meat substitutes and there are other types of substitute products. I wouldn't even call soy a substitute product because tofu, for instance, in and of itself is not a substitute for meat. It's its own type of protein and it's been used like that for ages in Asian cuisines. So generally not thinking about it as a substitute is a good idea, but also there are other types of plants that can be used in similar ways. We have pea protein, which depending on where you live might be more sustainable because it can be grown locally. That was the video. That was the impact of soy. I hope that you liked this video. If you did, you can leave me a thumbs up and you can subscribe to my channel. That would make my day. Also comment down below if you have other types of impact videos that you would like to see on this channel. I would of course love to make them and I always listen to you guys down below and see like what's up, what do people want, e, what are you curious about, for instance. Okay, thank you so much for watching. Have an amazing day. Take really good care of yourselves. Until next time, bye. Thank you so much for watching this video and also a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys help me create green zero waste contents and I love you guys. You can find the links to my social media accounts down below and the link to my Patreon on this screen. Bye!